Welcome back. Now, every country has her fair share of security challenges. But when the state of insecurity yeah. rises by the day, then there is need for urgent action. The violent extremism of various terrorist groups in Nigeria in recent years remains a major cause of concern, stemming from discontentment, ethnic and religious superiority, separatist agenda, and the likes. Different militant groups have emerged and are causing serious havoc in various parts of the country. Now, the government or the government institutions have also attempted to up the ante, but how effective have they been in all of this in different parts of the country? To help us understand the security situation in 2018 and how Nigeria has fared, we have in the studio Dr. Moses Ani, who is a retired squadron leader with the Nigerian Air Force. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Also nice here is here. Yami Dare, or Barrister Yami Dare, a retired colonel in the Nigerian Army. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Here as well is Tangwa Ashiru, simply security expert. Thank you for having me. Okay, so they say ladies first. So let me start with you, Tangwa. Thank you. How would you say 2018 has been security-wise? Well, we made some progress in, in a few areas. Um, However, overall, we regressed in quite a number of different areas. Now, I just have a little list because we compiled what increased and what de reduced um, over the year in 2018 versus 2017. So one of the things that we saw uh, reduced were civil unrest, especially in the area of protests. Protests reduced. Now, remember last year was around the time the president was away on medical leave. So there was a lot more agitation. There were a lot of protests. Um, that reduced. However, communal clashes, you just talked about it, right? People are angry, people are fighting each other, land disputes, all sorts of things going on. That actually increased quite a bit. Um, another thing that went down, surprisingly, were actually Boko Haram terrorist attacks. Um, that went down. However, we also saw a strategy shift completely. We saw a lot of activity move from Boko Haram to more of ISWAP. We've seen ISWAP say, you know what, we're going to focus our targets now and just target more military installations, get the weapons, increase our ammo, as well as displace the military personnel that are there so that they have more control of the area. So that was another thing we saw. And then one good thing, actually, that reduced quite a bit were um, police misconduct cases. Now, I don't know if you realize, but you know the SARS incident really peaked this year. Mm -hmm. And so we saw the police put in policies put in probably zero tolerance policies as well, and really try to hammer down on it with the, um, with the PCRU, Police Complaint Rapid Response Unit. And it also put power in the hands of, of individuals. So people could call in and say, hey, this SARS person or this policeman has taken money from me. And we saw the police force really crack down on that. So that was one good area that actually reduced. Okay, Colonel Dari, in your view, she's talked about what increased, what came down. What's your take? Well, I kind of um, agree with uh, Tanwa to a very large extent because uh, I also believe that um, we've recorded uh, whilst you cannot completely say, oh, we are there, but uh, we've recorded some successes and then um, some downside too. Uh, and uh, for me, I think um, what we all need to take the way is uh, to be to be realistic that look there's terrorism and that we must learn to live with it because to say you want to wipe it out I think that would be a very very tall order more or less a daydream so we must learn how to uh, grapple with this reality but uh, in terms of uh, awareness for everybody, everybody. And most importantly also is the issue of education, you know. So some people are just, you know, mentally lazy. They're just ignorant. They're not ready to even learn. And again, it's not their fault because, you know, the, 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 there's, no, there's no good foundation. But when you say people are lazy or mentally lazy and they're not ready to grab the information that's coming out there, weigh that against the statement of the government that Boko Haram has been defeated. defeated, technically as that may be? Well, I, I have said it several times, there's no need we play politics with uh, uh, this uh, war against uh, terrorism. 
because you wouldn't know who would be the next victim. So, there, I mean, we must all be focused. So these rhetorics, I mean, some people are just spokespeople and everybody just, you know, throw out what they want. But the reality is that there is an ongoing war and the war involves everybody. It cuts across the whole spectrum of our security agencies. More than ever before, we must close our ranks if we must succeed. We must close our ranks. Okay. Dr. Ani, apart from terrorism, there's also the menace of kidnapping. And lately, we've been hearing more about people being kidnapped so that their body parts can be harvested for ritualistic purposes. Apart from the issue of uh, harvesting body parts for ritualistic purposes, they're also using it as an opportunity to earn money for whatever they're doing. Now, I believe... Earn money, how do you mean? Oh, know, ransom? Yes, Okay, ransom. okay. Yeah. When people are kidnapped and they ask for ransom, there must be a purpose for which they're asking for that ransom. And I like what the colonel said about every one of us uh, getting educated about what's happening. Like, even the communities can become a force that is reckoned with in attacking this kidnapping issue, right? Because if we have communities that are fighting kidnapping, you can get aroused when there are situations like that. And you can also check your neighbor who is doing what around where you are. And when you have strangers around you, you could take cognizance of that and then report it that, look, we have strangers. We have, I think part of the problems we have now is that when you have a whole lot of people who um, ought to be educated Do on issue of security, Doctor, and they are not even concerned Doctor about Annie, what's happening around them. I, I understand. We, let me just ask Tang or something. I'll come back to you to that issue of people being educated around security. Tang, when you were talking, you said something about targeted issues. Um, is I swap deciding that we're going to target some things. Um, communal clashes, is as if it's targeted. So it's as if it's now narrowed down. Is it the question of education, like um, Connell Darius said, education on the part of the people, or education or, or information management on the part of the government? What is it that fuels that targeting strategy now? Okay, so there are a couple of, th I have so many things really to say, but there are a couple of things that I would say. First of all, Boko Haram is technically defeated. Now, what people realize or should realize is that Boko Haram terrorism or the terrorist group actually splintered into two. So you had the one that was being headed by Shekau and then you had the one that is now being headed by Albanari, which is ISWAP, Islamic State West Africa province. So ISWAP. The attacks we're seeing now are being conducted by ISWAP. BHT under Shekau have actually been sort of technically defeated. Um, their attacks have reduced. Think about it. When last did you hear about bombings, uh, suicide bombers, and things like that? They were the ones who primarily did that, attacked markets and so on. And it's shifted quite a bit. Now, with regards to personnel and education of people, it's very important because we're looking at, we're moving into a, a new 21st century where there's a lot of data, a lot of information. People call in. If there's an armory robbery, like here in Lagos, if there's an armory robbery attack, people call in and say, hey, something is going on. You should be able, or we should be able to harness all that information and come up with different uh, strategies. In fact, there are patterns with attacks. You find out that on some specific days of the week, there's an increase in armed robberies, for instance. So these are some of the information that analysts should be able to do. Now, do we have qualified people who know how to think, who know how to go through data, analyze it, and come up with solid information that can be used by the leaders? That's kind of where we're lacking a little bit. And this is where we say, if we can improve education of the general population, improve the quality of education of the youth, they can actually do a lot more in terms of getting information from basic data that's out there that can really help us focus and target the solutions to the problems that we're having. Dr. Andy, does that tie into that, what you were talking about, education? Yes, yes exactly. What we are looking at is, for instance, now, she talked about education of our youth. Like in the communities, you have youths, and those youths should be educated on what to look out for and what to fight for. Like, let's talk about installations that are around you, and you know that they are serving you. You should be able to protect it alongside with the 
military people or the, or the police, police, you know, don't just look at it as if it belongs to the government. It also belongs to you. And if anything happens to it, you are involved. Um, light installations, um, people come in your presence. They steal them. Why should they do that? You should raise an alarm. But is there enough movement? I know that growing up there was something called MAMSA. I, I agree that was targeted at a particular area, maybe economic issues. Mm. But it was about mass mobilization. And that movement sort of extended to other parts of living. Nigerians got up to do things. There was why, war yeah. against indiscipline. Yeah. So who should be driving this kind of mass education towards protecting, towards security, since we're looking at security? Yes, the government. That's, mm -hmm. that's um, their responsibility to the people. But I also want to say that the people should also be responsible to themselves. You must not allow people from outside to come and take what belongs to you. If we are protecting this nation, all of us are involved. Like what you have in developed countries, if there is an issue going on somewhere, you pick up your phone and create, look, there is something happening. If you mm. don't do that and you are just looking, I mean, you also go a corporate. Now, okay. Colonel, um, as we head towards the elections, um, do we have more to fear? as citizens of Nigeria? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say subscribe to say more to fear because it might sound very sensational. <laughs> but um, it's a common knowledge that when elections are around the corner, there is you know, an increase, especially in violent mm. crime, most of them politically motivated. I mean, you know. So uh, uh, the, the bottom line is that uh, uh, the National Orientation uh, Agency should step up. Is it doing anything? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they must. We know before. <laughs> because we used to hear teachers should teach well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are this, you should do it well. If you're a governor, govern well. But now it's like everybody is. Um, singing the song of who becomes. And that's not what it should be. And if you're even looking at that, you should look at this particular person. Who is this person? And you look deeply into the life of this person. Mm. And then on the basis of that, you can say, oh, I'm choosing this person because he can protect me. I'm you say, I, 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 sorry, I, I, still, I still want to make more comments on the issue of uh, the election mm. and the, you know, um, violence and all, what have you. You see, it behoves on everybody, especially even the media. The media, you discover, have a great, great role to play so, so that they, will, they, 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 they should eliminate everything so that for the world to see. And then I'm aware that um, uh, INEC, you know, so there are certain uh, security requirements. They've been having meetings with various... Uh, security uh, organizations. I think mm -hmm. that is controlled from the Office of the National uh, Security Advisor. Mm -hmm. So there's, a, there's a, you know, a synergy right now ongoing. Mm -hmm. And I think, hopefully, I, I, I personally, as a security chief, mm -hmm. I, I look at this election as against all the doom that people have uh, you know, prophesied yeah. or they are expecting. Mm -hmm. I think uh, with, with, with the with what I understand as the level of preparedness of, of INEC, mm. I think it should be one of the best. We should election. come out on scale. Yes, yes. Now, um, it's just that there's that phobia, you know, that once the election is around the corner, everybody, even some people will even travel out of the country because they don't want election to. Election frenzy. Now, Tawa, um, doctor has said that the government should actually lead this um, campaign of awareness. But since the National Orientation Agency is not seen to be doing much, it doesn't seem like they're doing much, um, what happens to the people who should now lead this campaign? Because the people need to be taught exactly how not to get into trouble. Yes. Um, the interesting thing about this, when we talk about moving security from a federal structure more into the hands of the state, this is part of the reason why. You know, every state actually deals with different things. We've seen, if you look at a map and you look at cultism, for instance, or cases of cult clashes, 
It only affects southern states. You don't see that in the north. Whereas up north, you have a lot of incidents of, of a lot of young youth on drugs um, and then drug-related um, issues. That's happening. In the Middle Belt, we have the issues with the farmers, herders, uh, pastoralist crisis. And also on the, towards the western part, uh, we have issues of um, mining, mind. exactly. So armed gangs, a lot of gangs, Kogi, Kwara, um, you know, Niger, and so on. So it varies depending on where you are. And that's why we've been saying, look, put some, of, some more power into the hands of the states. They know what their particular issues are, and then they can then create and focus um, some solutions around the particular issues of that state. Specific. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. When we talked about some things that 